Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning on our show today, the Free Minded Organization. We are having a very wonderful discussion today related to the African liberation, the African way forward. My name is Kabbalah Hadpis. I'm the uh, admin of this uh, platform, Free Minded Organization. On the other side, we're having Izzy, who is uh, also the admin of uh, African United. I will actually give him a mic to introduce himself. Izzy. Okay. Uh, greetings, fellow Africans all over the world. Um, this is Izzy Chibonomozo, and I'm the leader of the One Africa Family Organization, OAF, author of The Wisdom and the Power of African Unity, and author of two about African progress. We are here to discuss a very important issue. Why is it that whatever is African is being doubted all over the world? That is the reason why we are here. We want to know the reason why products or even the African people are not being accepted globally, especially African products. So we want to look into the issue and uh, find the solution so that we can solve this uh, problem. Because check it all over the world, African brands are not being uh, treated with the same acceptance with products from all over the world. Um, not only African, I mean, African, whatever is African. African means whatever that comes out of Africa, whatever that is from Africa. For example, African names. African names are being born only by Africans. You don't have um, many Europeans. I've not even seen any European bearing an African name or an Asia with an African name. Check it. African languages are being spoken only by Africans. African schools are being attended by only Africans. African hospitals are only being used by Africans. Only uh, the raw materials from Africa that I know that are being accepted globally because they know that these products, these uh, raw materials are not being produced by Africans. They're being produced by Mother Nature. For example, oil, gold, silver, limestone, all these are not uh, being manufactured by human beings. They are being manufactured by nature. They are being accepted globally. But even at that, we still know that in 2017, in October 2017, that yams from Nigeria were rejected in Britain. They said that the yams were substandard. I began to wonder how could yams uh, grown by the earth be substandard? The Nigerian government explained that the yams um, got rotten before they uh, got to Europe, to UK. Now look at African leaders. Are African leaders being treated with respect over the world? How many African leaders have full audience when they address the United Nations? How many African leaders are being treated with respect over the world? How many African leaders are being honored the way uh, European leaders are being honored? How many of them have been involved in world affairs? I mean, serious affairs in the world. How many Africans are treated with, with respect over the world? Look at Look at how Africa has been reduced. We have been treated as though we are not. Look at the COVID-19 pandemic going on all over the world. We know of the COVID organics launched by Madagascar in um, April 20, 2020. The product has proven itself to be very effective. Um, Madagascar, it took about two months for one person to even die in Madagascar, and the person was uh, already sick with diabetes and hypertension, so the person died. Now look at, in Europe, look at in, in America, over 1.7 million cases of COVID-19 in America. Not once has America thought of even buying the COVID um, organics from Madagascar. They don't even care about it. Look at um, Italy, over 20,000 deaths, UK, over 20,000 deaths. None of them cares about buying this product from Africa because it is from Africa. These are the things we're looking at. Why is it that whatever that is from Africa is being treated with disgust, being doubted all over the world? Because the effects are very, very uh, uh, bad on Africa. Because if our products are not being accepted globally, it limits the amount of market we can have. That means we cannot sell to the world whatever we have, and that will limit the amount of money we can have. Because if you can't sell your products worldwide, how are you going to uh, uh, get the resources, you're going to, um, monetary resources you're going to uh, need to build Africa? So these are very big problems. Africans are being treated as though we are inferior people. And until whatever that is African is being accepted globally, that means Africans are still considered to be inferior. And that is a very negative tag that we have to remove. And that is what we are here to discuss. How do we solve this problem of 
or whatever but that is, is is African not being accepted all over the world. That is what we want to find out because look at no no uh, international organization has its headquarters in Africa. Is it the United Nations? The headquarters is, is, is in New York. Is it the IMF? Which organization do we have in Africa? The the international organization that is headquartered in Africa. So this uh, this uh, rejection, this doubt of whatever is African has to be treated and has to be uh, treated once and for all. And that is what we're here to discuss. We have to find out the reasons why whatever is African is not being accepted in the world and to know the solutions to this problem. Thank you, Kapala. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eze, for your your exhaustive introduction of the subject today, why uh, African products are not accepted and why everything African is adopted in the world. It's very important that we discuss, as you mentioned, because if we don't understand the source of our problems, it, uh, it's likely going to be difficult for us to uh, figure out what kind of measure and uh, techniques that we can implement in order to uh, fix our problems. And uh, when it comes to the question, why everything Africans being adopted, everything Africans being, uh, is not being taken seriously in the world, I think it's, we can trace, we can trace this back from uh, the 400 or more than 400 years of uh, servitude where uh, we have been from. And myself, I'm always having this uh, analogy in order to explain what is our problems today as African people. You know, um, I, I grew up, you know, in a very uh, diverse area where I used to visit my grandparents. Uh, they were living actually in the village and uh, the activity over there was to farm chickens, you see. And every time I used to visit them, my duty, I, 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 I did like to obviously be uh, being involved with the chickens, uh, taking care of them, letting them out in the morning, letting them back in in the evening. So what happened is when we get new chicken, which did not know the place in the house and the environment, I couldn't just let it go uh, out immediately because otherwise we'll never get back in the evening. It will get lost. So what I will do, I will tie it around and give it food for a couple of days, four or five days. And then after four days, I'll let the chicken free. It will go out, but it will never go away. It will still gonna come back at the same place where it was held captive. This is the condition of us as African people today. We have to look our reality today in that perspective. Why we doubt, why we reject everything African is simply because we have been subjugated for more than 400 years where we used to look to the masters to like what comes from the masters, to receive what the masters brought for us and nothing from our own, uh, uh, our own uh, thinking, our own uh, creativity was really uh, implemented. Nothing from our own perspective was actually brought into existence. It means we have been uh, psychologically destroyed and dis uh, disabled to uh, live for ourselves and to be in charge of our own destiny. And that's a reason why after these 400 years of servitude and disgusting treatment against African people, we are still today struggling to accept what comes from us. We are still struggling to accept anything that is African. And this is in every every areas of our uh, reality of our lives when you go to schools let's start with the school universities our 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 curriculum start with greeks and romans and everything that happens that happened before greeks are being forgotten are being rejected everything that happened uh, before romans and greeks are being forgotten. Our yes. philosophy today begins with uh, Plato and Socrates. Aristotle. Who, Aristotle, exactly. Who were the children to the African philosophers? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So for, for me, I think the sickness is in the yes. four or four, 500 years of servitude, which we were 
uh, not able to express ourselves, to express our talents, our thoughts, our mind, and to do nothing except look into the masters and to get what came from them. That is why until today, we still dubbed everything Africans. I hand, that, I hand over to you. Go ahead. Yes, you make making sense. The, the, the subjugation of Africa um, through slave trade and colonization brought Africa down to the bottom of humanity. Look at um, it, uh, the, the colonization of Africa didn't begin 400 years or 500 years back, like you pointed out. It began about 2,545 years ago. That was in 525 BC when Egypt fell to the Persians, um, to King Cambyses II. That was the Persian king that conquered Egypt. Since then, Africa has been having one colonizer after the other, one colonizer after the other. After the Persians, we had the the Greeks, Alexander the Great conquered Egypt in 332 BC. After the, uh, Alexander the Great, the Romans came. After the Romans came, the, Arab, the Arabs came in 642 AD. After the Arabs, we had the Ottoman. After the Ottoman, we had the, the French. Napoleon Bonaparte entered Egypt. After Napoleon Bonaparte, we had um, uh, the, the British. So Africa has, has been having a lot of colonial masters and so on. It didn't start today. These people reduced our mindset. They reduced our IQ, our psyche. They reduced our attitude, they, they made us to believe that we, we are not worth anything. And that is the number one reason why whatever is African is not being accepted. We Africans now believe that whatever is from Africa is not valuable. We believe that if we do not have a European name, we are not yet human beings. We believe if we don't speak the European language, we are not getting it, we're getting there. Look at intra-African trade. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in 2017, intra-African trade was just 16.6%. Whereas in Europe, it was about 68% intra-European trade, in Asia, 59%, in America, 55%, in Africa, 16.6%. Africans believe that they should not buy from each other. If I believe I should not buy from my brother, is it an outsider that hates me that should buy from me? If we don't buy from ourselves, who should buy from us? That is one of the number one reason. Number one effect of the subjugation of Africa, it reduced the, the amount of believe Africa has, Africans have for themselves. We believe that we're not worth anything that we should buy from Europe. That's why we have only just 16.6% uh, intra-African trade. Two, another reason why whatever is African is not being accepted, which is also courtesy of the colonization and the slave trade, is we treat ourselves awfully. We treat ourselves so badly. Look at tribalism in Africa. Apart from Tanzania, where tri uh, tribalism has been drastically reduced by the policies of the former president, uh, Kambarake Nyerere. Almost every African state complains of tribalism. People are being treated badly. If you're from this particular ethnic group, you are being sidelined. They want to kill you. They want to marginalize you. And the world sees all these things. Here in Nigeria, I know the amount of tribalism we face every single day. Even my own father was a victim, has been a victim of tribalism. Yes, my father's containers were seized in 2000. No, about um, 1993 or so, because he was from the Igbo ethnic group. That was how his business went down the drain. And that is it. Since then, he has not been able to uh, uh, be as worthy as he was before. This is this is tribalism. People from other ethnic groups were not uh, affected. They mentioned that it was my own ethnic group, the Igbo. Other ethnic groups also have been suffering the same thing in one way or the other in Nigeria, not only the Igbo. You go to every other ethnic group, uh, every state, in Africa, you still find the same uh, evil. The way we treat ourselves is bad. Our leaders treat us also very badly. Look at our leaders. We have engineers in Africa, but the African leaders prefer to go to China to bring engineers to build roads, to build bridges in Africa. Is that how it should be? When the world sees that you don't value what you have, they see that you treat yourself badly. How are they going to treat you very nicely? You are the one that you should treat yourself nicely then others will see that and see and treat you very very beautifully but this is not what we're seeing in africa our leaders siphon the world in, 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 in our nations take them to europe lodge them in european accounts europeans used to build uh, good life for the citizens where are we in africa we are languishing in poverty we are the ones that need all the wealth in the world but our leaders instead of bringing the wealth of the world to us they take the little we have to foreign countries the world sees all these things and they say this that means these people are not valuable. So why should we value what you have? The third reason why whatever uh, is from Africa is not being valued is, is because we have not uh, um, had a track record 
of excellence and productivity in recent times. Apart from the classical era of Africa, when we had Egypt, we built the pyramids, we built the labyrinth, we built the Sphinx, we are the greatest people in the world as of that time. Since then, after the subjugation of Africa has been ongoing since then, we have not been building much. We have not had anything we can present to the world and say, because of this, now respect us. Look at uh, uh, Singapore. Singapore is known as the freest, the most innovative, the best, the business, most business friendly uh, country in the world. That is why you have about 7,000 uh, um, uh, uh, international companies in Singapore. Singapore is just a, a, a nation state, very tiny nation. Singapore has about 7,000 multinational companies in Singapore alone. Singapore rose from being a third world nation to a first world nation in just one generation. When people see that track record, they believe whatever you present. Whatever you see from Singapore, you're not going to doubt it because you already know that Singapore has made a name for itself. You go to South Korea, you have LG products, you have um, uh, Samsung, you go to America, you have Amazon, you have Walmart, you have Google, you have um, Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Instagram. Because of that, whatever you see from the United States of America, you don't have to doubt it, you accept it immediately. But in Africa, we have not had any product, any brand who can say, okay, let the world look at this brand and, and accept whatever is African. That is why the world is finding it difficult to accept the Kofi organics from Madagascar, even though President Rajuelina had to drink the product, the, the tea himself. Still, the world is still finding it difficult to accept the product. Germans, they prefer to die than to take that product. The Italians, they prefer to die in tens of thousands. They prefer to bury people every day than to take the product. Why? Because we have not had a track record of excellence. We have not had something that we can point that to and say the world should accept us because of this. These are the, this is, these are the third reason. Then the fourth reason is racism. Racism is, as we know it, treating another race as being inferior and treating yourself as being superior. In Africa, we still apply racism against ourselves. Even we Africans, we apply racism believing that we are inferior and others are superior. Thank God for the uh, revival that is going on, the spirit of Africanism pushing all, all over the world on Facebook, like for example, look at your page, one of 15,000 page likes. Look at the activities going on on your page. People are now waking up. Your messages are getting over to the to the world. Our messages are spreading all over the world, changing people's mindset to make people know that yes, we are now waking up. We are not going to uh, um, apply racism to our own selves. We are not going to uh, uh, believe in ourselves. The whole world believes that Africans are inferior. Look at what uh, you wrote in your book and uh, as preparation of the mind without uh, compensation. What uh, Frederick Hegel, the German philosopher, uh, philosopher said in 1831, that Africa is a country where the men are like children, the people cut off from the historical uh, background or so, that Africa does not belong to the world history. The same Hegel said that Negroes, that Negroes represent humanity in its crudest and most unrefined form. Is it uh, Professor um, Hugo uh, Trevoropa that said that Africa, perhaps there will be a history of Africa to teach in the future, that for now there's no history of Africa to teach, that the only history that is known about Africa is the entrance of Europeans into Africa, that the rest is darkness, and darkness is not the subject of history. That's how you summarize African history, and Africa has no history. How do you expect people who say all these things to accept what comes from Africa? These people believe that Africa should not produce anything. Why should we produce something as an African? We know you already. You are not. You are. You are nobody. That's what the world sees Africa. So that's why when Germany had that, uh, 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 Madagascar produced organic drugs. They, they, they instead of accepting the drugs or buying it, they said, "Give us the recipe. Let let us know how to produce the drug. Let us work on it in our lab. Why not test it on their individual, on their citizens?" They refused. But all these people, they went to India. They went to India and ordered the hydrogel chloroquine from India. Even other African countries, they went to European countries, they ordered all these um, um, products from um, other, other countries of the world. But the one from Madagascar, nobody dares to buy it. So these are the four reasons which still emanate from that reason you gave, the subjugation of Africa. These four reasons emanated from the subjugation of Africa, that whatever is African should not be accepted. So these are the four main reasons why African products are not being accepted. I believe that you might also have other reasons to add or you still have to complement what I say. Thank you very much, brother. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, definitely, you you were really uh, accurate in your uh, in the way that you have articulated that. I mean, the the main four reasons why uh, Af everything that is Africans obviously uh, rejected. And in my first intervention, I actually just spoke uh, about why we reject ourselves. That is why I spoke about 
the psychological conditioning where we were dehumanized. That's why up to today we reject ourselves, so rejecting automatically everything that come uh, that comes from ourselves. And of course, we have also the challenge in the world where the world is rejecting everything is African, and uh, that is, I mean, uh, all the all the all the facts that you have obviously brought up are definitely correct. And I think as well, on top of that, I can say that if it's, it's actually a psychological fact that if you have subjugated people for more than 300 years, you have dominated people for many, many years, it's likely going, going to be impossible for you to accept something from those people as a contribution yes. to uh, yes. uh, the humanity or to a civilization. But uh, yes. despite all those uh, people that you have, uh, like Richard Egel, all those German philosophers who treated African or qualified African as subhumans or uh, degeneration of human beings. I mean, that is, those are statements that we have accepted during the time that yeah. we didn't actually know very much about our, our own history. But today, we know that uh, the, you know, before there was the Greeks, before there were Romans, Africa uh, was there. And even some uh, European authors have, have written this, this guy, James, uh, his name is James somebody, who wrote a book about the stolen legacy. I think you will, you have to uh, oh, Jim. get that book. George G.M. James. George G. M. James. Exactly. Stolen legacy. Yeah. He, he yes. well articulated in his book about what is considered to be, today to be uh, Greek philosophy. Yes. And uh, Roman is exactly it came from Africa. It came from Africa. There's nothing that you can uh, talk about in terms of today's civilizations which does not have a basic from African roots, you see, or which right. does not have African seed in itself. So I think today we have to go beyond that uh, discussion of okay, uh, that alarming discussion of why is the world rejecting us, but we have to move actually from. What can we do for ourselves? I think one of the reasons why the world keep on, uh, I mean, the people in the world keep on rejecting our, us, rejecting our invention, rejecting our productivity, it's simply because we're still counting on the people who previously were our oppressors. We're still counting on them to accept us and accept our ideas and accept our thoughts, you see? As you mentioned, how can we accept the people who have dehumanized, uh, dehumanized us to uh, accept what we bring the world we have to begin by accepting ourselves we have to begin by believing in ourselves and doing things for ourselves not even doing to impress the world or to get the world's approval we have to begin by doing for ourselves and doing ourselves and how do we go about it that's i want to hear from you how can we go about it yes the first key that we need to break these things the first key that we need to break these genes that whatever is African is inferior, is first of all, the African vision. Vision has changed nations, has changed history, changed the lives of individuals. That is why I start with the African vision. Vision is a future, what you see, the future that you see, your destiny, what, what do you see of tomorrow? Africa has been stuck in the present, the present predicament. And we, are of, we have also been looking behind to see the classical era of Africa. I'm sorry. Yes, the classical era is, of, of Africa is very great. But what do we see of the future? Should we keep looking back to 5,000 years ago to what we did in Egypt? Or are we going to keep looking uh, at what we have today, which is not is an eyesore, the eyes of today? No. We have to look to the future. We have to see the better future. We have to look and see a great destiny for Africa, which is what I call the African vision. The African vision is the future of Africa. The African vision is where Africa is going to be 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now. Where will Africa be? Africa is going to rise again. Africa will rise again from last to first. We are going to rise again from last to first. Let, let me... Let, we let rise... Me, let me... Yes. Just wanna, I just wanna jump in there to uh, to ask you just a little bit. Yes. Yeah. 
yes. the, the topic of the vision, it's very, very important because without yes. vision, there's no uh, expectation yes. of the future. But how do you really understand or yes. believe that African or Africans generally can have a yes. shift, uh, perspective being shifted in the vision? Uh, I mean, in the future, yes. if we have today about... 80% of African people who are hooked up into religions and religions that teach African people that there's no future on this earth because every future, yes. any future that we have is in heaven. How can we have African or uh, inclined yes. in the vision of the future if they don't expect, if the religious uh, leaders do not teach people about any vision related to our life on this earth but every vision that or any vision whatsoever has to be linked in heaven, which somehow, somehow, psychologically, this uh, uh, disabled uh, or uh, how can I say disconnect people from that commitment of working to achieve something of great value in this world because we have expectation in heaven. How can we how can we talk about a vision of the future to African people who are really hooked up in religion? Okay. We have to know that uh, lead, religious leaders, their job is to teach religion. But we, the teachers of Africanism, our job is to teach African progress. And that is our job. We are going to make them know that the religious leaders have the honors to teach them about their uh, destiny and afterlife. But we have to teach them about what we have to gain in this present life. Because, okay, come to think of it, African people, uh, that believe in going to heaven or which I also believe in. Why do they travel to Europe or to America for better life? Why do they cross the desert to go to, uh, to Europe? Why not die in poverty and go to heaven? So we have to make them know that even while looking to heaven, we have a present life to live. If God wanted you to, to be in heaven, he would have created you as one of the angels and, and left you in heaven. Why did God create you on earth? He created you on earth to make an impact. So we have to make the African people know that we have a, an assignment on earth. God that created the whole universe, Mungu, as he's called in Swahili, has an assignment for every human being on earth. And that assignment here is on earth. And whatever you achieve on earth is what is going to determine what you're going to be in heaven. So that is the message we're going to pass to every African. That we Africans have a role on earth to play before going to heaven. And that even whatever you do on earth is going to determine whether you're going to go to heaven or not going to go to heaven according to every religion. Apart from uh, Buddhism, which doesn't teach about much about going to heaven, they believe in enlightenment. They don't believe much about heaven. Even Judaism doesn't teach much about going to heaven. In the Old Testament, nothing like heaven was mentioned, or heaven or earth, for human beings. It was for angels. So we have to make Africans know that we have our inheritance on earth and also in heaven, that we have an assignment here on earth, and then our reward will be in heaven. So that is what we're going to teach to Africans, that if the, if we refuse to do anything about the poverty in Africa today, we're going to suffer it. And most of, most of our children are going to derail from the path of God because of poverty. Many of them are going to enter into Yahoo, as they call it, they're going to enter into cybercrime to make money. So that is why we have to change our mindset and know that we have an assignment here on earth, so long as we're on earth. Even all the religious leaders, they didn't do the assignment in heaven. They did the assignment on earth. Prophet Muhammad did not do his assignment in heaven, he did it on earth, and we he's been remember, uh, remembered on earth and to be rewarded in Al Jannah. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, did his assignment on earth. The Jews, all these leaders we look up to, they did their assignment on earth. So, what is your own assignment on earth as an African? That is, you have an assignment to do for your fellow Africans. And now, what are we going to do as Africans to rise again? We have to accept the African vision, we have to know that we. Africans, we are going to rise again from last to first. This African vision means that Africans are not going to be the poorest people in the world again. We are going to rise from the poorest to the richest, from the least people in the world to the greatest, from the bottom of the ladder to the top. That is the African vision. We are going to rise again. This vision has the power to change the mentality of Africans from a mentality of dependency to a mentality of mastery. A, 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 a mentality of we're not going to be dependent on others. It's going to make us to value whatever we have from Africa because since we know that we are going to be the leaders of the world in the future, according to the African vision, we are going to now value whatever we have in Africa. That is one number one reason why we must accept the African vision. It will make us to value whatever we have as Africans, to make us to believe in ourselves. It will make us to believe in ourselves. Two, it's going to make us to go for the best. 
Because if you're going to be the leader of the world, if you're going to be the richest people in the world, if you're going to be the most respected people in the world, if you're going to be the people to produce the best in the world. And how are we going to produce the best in the world? First of all, we're going to change our mentality from a mentality of dependency to a mentality of productivity. How does that work? We're not going to be people who depend on others for production, for, for finished products. We're going to start producing our own. We're going to start, uh, we're going to have an export oriented mindset. We're going to have a, a mentality of excellence, of productivity. So two, we're going to start producing. Once you have the mindset, you start acting according to the mindset, start producing. The African vision will remove that mindset of that pain of the slave trade that we are stuck in the past. We're not stuck in the past. Africa is not stuck in the past. We have a future. We have a great future. We are going to be the best in the world. That's the African vision I got since 2011 when I was a, a student in the University of Nigeria, Asuka, in my final year, when I went to pray. That's when I got the vision of, of Africa rising again from last to first. So that is how it's going to be. It changes our mindset from the mindset of dependency to the mindset of mastery. So to, to, to now start producing. There are many things we can start producing in Africa. Look at fans, television, uh, remote controls, batteries, aeroplanes. These are things we can start producing in Africa. We don't, don't we, we can start producing all these things. Okay, aeroplane needs a little bit of research, but we can start producing our own cars, start producing our own telephones, uh, um, mobile phones, and all those things. We need to start uh, producing in Africa. When I'm talking about production, I'm not talking about, talking about crude oil, uh, um, uh, um, cocoa, and all those things. Well, I, uh, it seems like I lost you there. Um, your, your signal is not... Uh, Chocolate or other yeah, products. It's not, it's not that good. Um, are you there? Yes, uh, I, I can continue. So why should Africa be producing cocoa and countries that are not in the tropical area be producing chocolates? We have to start producing, start manufacturing products. We have to start producing finished products, technological products. We have to start producing our own electric cars. I don't mean producing just one in one country. I don't mean producing cars only in Nigeria, Enosin, or Katanka, uh, Katanka cars in Ghana. No, that's not, not what I mean. Something happening globally, uh, continentally, happening in, in the whole of Africa, happening in DRC. Look at DRC, the richest place in, uh, one of the richest places on Earth. What about with $5 trillion in terms of natural resources? Exploitation. Look at the amount of exploitation that's happening in the DRC. Look at the, uh, the resources in DRC. Uh, people come from all over the world to take the resources. So we have to start producing. That is why we need the African vision. We have to start insisting on producing, refining our resources, or, or using them to produce our own goods. Then number three, we have to start going into research and development. Research and development, research is to know what other people are doing, and development is to develop yours. We have to go into research and development. All over the world, people are going to research and development. Um, last year, 2019, the world spent about $2.3 trillion on research and development. $2.3 trillion was were, were spent globally on research and development. Guess what? Africa spent only about $20 or $21 billion on research and development. 0.9% of global share of research and development for the whole of Africa. China spent about $500 billion. America spent about $550 billion on research and development. How are we going to produce those people? We have to go into research and development if we want to start producing high quality products. China has launched 5G. We are not doubting whether 5G should be implemented or not. China is already, already researching 6G. But, you know, they go for 7G. Why Africa is stuck in 4G? We can't, we can't be stuck in this uh, 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 technological backwardness. We have to be ahead. To research and development, we have to be ahead. We have to start researching. We have to start developing. Look at how much Amazon spends every year. On, on, on research and development. They spent about 20 to $30 billion on research and development. Huawei, the same thing. Um, Facebook, this will spend billions of dollars on research and development. Then the fourth one, we have to uh, uh, um, start going for standard. We have to have a standardization policy in Africa. Products from Africa should be of the best standard. We should not just be producing anything. We have to produce products that are of, of global standard that can be accepted. For example, at this uh, Madagascar COVID, COVID organics, if it becomes effective in treating COVID-19, as we believe it to be, it's going to ramp up Africans, uh, Africa's reputation as, as, a, as a good uh, source of, uh, of finished products. But if it fails, it's going to kill 
uh, already damaged image. So I pray that the COVID, uh, the COVID organics from Madagascar, from Africa, works. So we need to produce the best standard to boost our image. Then finally, Africa must unite. Africa must unite. It's not a slogan. It's not a chance. Why should we unite? For example, you see that for products in Africa to be accepted globally, we Africans have to accept them. So how are we going to accept them? We have 1.35 billion people in Africa. We have 1.35 billion people in Africa. We have to have a single market in Africa. We are all products in Africa being bought and sold within Africa. With that, we have to increase intra-African trade from 16.6% to somewhere to like 40 or 50 or around 60% uh, uh, in the future, maybe in five years from now, which is why we need the African continental free trade area. So once we have these products from Africa, will be accepted by we Africans first. Once we accept the African products, they, they, the products will now start trickling into other parts of the world. And when they test the product and see that the products are of good reputation, of good standard, the reputation of Africa will start increasing gradually. By the time it starts increasing, increasing gradually, time will come when whatever is from Africa will be accepted globally. So these, these are the five uh, keys. So the keys, they, 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 are, they are sourced from the African vision. The African vision is just like the, 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 the channel through which this, uh, the other five solutions now pump out from. So, uh, Kabbalah, let me, let's hear from you and know what you have to say about these uh, the solutions to the, uh, the issue. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Eze. You were really uh, um, explicit about your ideas. Um, and the, the most important thing that I've... Uh, that I like, it's uh, the vision. You speak about uh, African vision, it's very important. I think that vision has to be rooted into a project of restoration of confidence. We have to be involved in a project that will restore the confidence in African people uh, to believe that we are capable of doing things that we need to be done for our own survival and our own life. Uh, that's where everything has to, to begin because without confidence, you cannot uh, uh, break all the barriers that we have to face as African people in order to do something that is acceptable, firstly for yourself and also for the world. And Talking about the restoration of confidence, I think we have to look into education. That's where everything has to begin, because if we want to uh, uh, build cars, we have to be educated on how we can build cars so that we can produce things of quality that will be accepted, not just in Africa, but in the rest of the world. If we have to uh, deal with uh, 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 building cell phones, we are complex machines. We have to, people have to be educated eventually so that they can be able to build all, uh, all those complex machines and all those uh, things that we need in Africa. So education is very important. Unfortunately, we're still running on the education that is designed and uh, curriculum that is obviously uh, uh, planned by the European slave masters. And this is not going to solve this cannot solve anything uh, related to our problems because in no case you can expect for a strong person, for a powerful person to teach you on how to take over, uh, uh, to take, I mean, to go away or to get away from his power over you. In other words, no powerful person can teach you how to get rid of his domination over you. So if we still having education system that is designed by the people who are powerful in this world, because we always, uh, we always want to fit into the standards because we have all these international standards that we are having. So for you to be accepted internationally, you have to fit into the standards. That is one part. I mean, that is uh, one reason why I do agree totally with the president of uh, Madagascar. I watched his uh, interview on uh, Radio, 20, Radio France 24 when he was asked about uh, why do you believe that your, uh, your, your, your formula uh, is, is efficient for this COVID-19? And he said, we have to go away from that uh, system, that mentality of believing that everything that is coming from Africa has to be adopted, has to be uh, 
kind of uh, double checked, like, you know, like it's not compatible. And he sort of said something like that, that I agreed a lot, uh, agreed uh, totally with. So I think we firstly have to work on the restoration of the confidence. And, uh, you know, of course, I, I think many uh, Pan-Africans or Pan-Africanists will say that we have to get away from the history and to shift on the future. But that's true. But the thing is, there's uh, three time, uh, there's three time periods in uh, every person's life. There's a past, the present, and the future. The problem with the present is, is that it's only brief. You know, the only time that you have now is the, is the past and the future. And without the past, you cannot really have a correct orientation of the future because as Dr. Clark said, it's uh, history is a clock, you know, is the compass that people use to find themselves in the map of human geography. And history tells one what they have been, where they have been. It tells us well, who we are and what we are. And most importantly, it tells us where we are supposed to go and what we are supposed to be. The history, I mean, the relationship between history and the people is the same as relationship between a mother and a child. So history is very important. We always have to talk about our achievement during the time of ancient Egyptian civilization because that is the map, you know, that's the compass that leads us to what we have to achieve tomorrow. You know, we are the ones who gave the first civilization to the human uh, human uh, uh, to the humankind and we probably are the ones who are going to give to the world its last civilization understand there's uh, there's a guy who wrote something that i found uh, uh most important uh, he said that uh the first lesson that we have to teach to humanity is their contribution to civilization and the second is to teach them about other people unfortunately the second lesson and the first lesson is what Europeans masters never taught their children. That's why up to today, whatever that you come up with as African person, as a black person, you are, you are highly going to get resistance and you have to work twice more than any average person has to work in order to obviously be accepted by other people. Nevertheless, we have to look forward. We don't have to stuck in the history that I agree with you. And looking forward for me, we have to work on the restoration of the confidence. We have to start by teaching our young ones, our children, you see, about what, is, what it is to be an African. You know, we have to teach them about African pride. We have to teach them exactly about the restoration of confidence, as I said, things that will restore the confidence in them. We have to limit them or to limit the exposure uh, to the white teachers, to European teachers, because that is some way, somehow, uh, counterbalance the confidence that we have to restore in ourselves of we are capable of doing things. So it has to go in all areas, in all aspects of our lives. And that has to be really through education, where we have to uh, teach children our history and also bring the vision for tomorrow in our school, the vision for tomorrow, you know, so it means we have to look how we can change the curriculum that we have today, because if this is a Eurocentric curriculum that we have in schools today. So today, so we have to look how we can bring more of African elements in our uh, curriculum, educational curriculum, so that our children, when they grow up, they grow up with that consciousness of who, who they are and the duty that uh, the, the duty which is theirs duty that ha they have to fulfill in Africa in order to see Africa, which is different from, uh, uh, from now. So briefly, uh, uh, in, uh, I will say that we have to work uh, in the restoration of the confidence, starting from our families, and we have to go in schools and it bring more of African elements in our schools. It means we have to have this education system that is structured to our needs. Let's say, for instance, education that is obviously uh, structured on the knowledge of African resources and education that is uh, structured on the African needs. It means, for instance, we have to look for now in Africa, what do we need? You know, let's say, for instance, in DRC, in South Africa, what does African people of that region need? 
and that has to be the focus of education to bring uh, 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 to bring the solutions that people will have to implement in order to obviously change the paradigm and the reality of that area, specific area. And uh, definitely, we have to look into uh, uh, broadly into the African reality and see how we can change uh, things. I leave I leave it to you. Uh, do you have something to say from that? Uh, well, unfortunately, I've lost you. Uh, anyway, uh, I think we uh, have ended our program today. We had uh, 45 minutes of discussion today, very wonderful discussion about uh, why is everything that is African adopted and rejected in the world. And uh, it's uh, really wonderful. We're looking forward to uh, have more uh, topic and to discuss more about this and uh, to tackle more uh, more topics that really are related to the African progress and African development. Thank you so much for tuning in. Looking forward to have you around again. Uh, have a good Sunday. Thank you.